The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt by Edmund Morris. Teddy Roosevelt was one of the most influential political figures in American history and for good reason. He was a man of very strong principles and I think those principles can basically be summed up as hard work, family, and probably most importantly, rugged individualism. This is how he became both an icon of Americanism and manliness. After reading this book, it's hard not to be impressed by this man's superhuman strength to stick to his principles, to work hard, and to be aggressively curious about everything. When he was a kid, he was interested in plants and animals. Um, but because this is Teddy Roosevelt, he, this wasn't just a passing interest. He didn't just read books about the plants and animals. He wrote books about the plants and animals that were on his street, and he analyzed them. He was very scientific in how he uh, approached it. And it's impressive because he was just so young at the time. He was lucky to be born into a successful family, and so he was able to travel the world and see large swaths of it. And he was just curious about everything that was happening. Uh, this despite severe asthma and physical limitations. And the physical limitations forced him to work hard, to exercise, and it contributed to, I think, his boisterous personality that if you just stick to something, you can overcome it. And that's, by and large, what he did in the course of his life. I love how principled Teddy Roosevelt is. There's a story in this book where he is out in the middle of the wilderness and uh, actually treacherous survival conditions and he finds these outlaws. They apprehend the outlaws and most people in Theodore's situation would have just executed them because in survival conditions, it just had to be done. But that's against Teddy's principles and so he stays up the night to make sure they don't escape. But he doesn't just do that, he reads Anna Karenina and he doesn't just read Anna Karenina, he writes a critique of Tolstoy's writing. And it's just fascinating to watch how he can be mentally active in all situations. He seems to never get tired. He could have been a scientist, he could have been a writer, he could have been a historian, he could have been a rancher living out in the Dakotas, and I think he would have been happy in all of those. And yet for some reason, and this is the great contradiction in my head, he decides to be a politician. Teddy Roosevelt strikes me as such a smart, interesting person, and politics strikes me as something so empty. It's tribal, it's about smearing the other person, about posturing. I have a hard time accepting that if you're interested in all these things like he was, that you would have any interest in politics. But after reading this book, I think the reason that he felt so called to be in politics was he saw himself as the guy who could clean things up. He could clean up corruption and he could give everyone a fair deal. Because he did believe in rugged individualism in the sense that everyone deserves a fair opportunity and he saw some inequities that he felt he could write. And I think also he was very interested in the global stage. He had a strong interest in expanding America on that stage. This book is extremely well researched and well presented and you really get a sense of who Teddy Roosevelt was by the end of it. Um, it won a Pulitzer Prize and if this book didn't win a Pulitzer Prize, I don't know what the point of handing out Pulitzer Prizes is. My only issue with the book really is the length because the audio version of this is 28 hours long and it covers to the point of his life when he becomes president. So I still don't know what happens after 1901, when he takes over after McKinley is assassinated. I think it just goes to show how interesting Teddy Roosevelt is that a biography in just this part of his life could be so long and still be extremely fascinating to read. Four and a half stars.